Um, so Logic 10.4 is out and there's a lot of great new features and one that I was really interested in was a feature called Articulation Sets and they've included a couple of samples uh, for the two new instruments, Studio Horns and Studio Strings. So if you use those instruments, you can test out the articulation sets and see how they work. But uh, if you're like me, you're probably going to want to build your own custom articulation sets to use with your own virtual instruments and that's what I'm going to take a look at here. So I've loaded up a virtual instrument, it's a violin sound, and it just uses key switches to switch between the different articulations. So I can come in to... Um, and we've got the different articulations available in the list here, and you can see that the key switch area on my keyboard here changes between them. Um, absolutely fine, and have been doing it like this for a long time. Uh, so it's fine if you can sort of play a performance and hit the key switches as you go for live performance, that's fine. Um, but if you want to do sort of sequencing work, you've, you've got to come into the piano roll and you've got to start drawing in the key switches. Uh, kind of like this, and then when we play... And it's, it's fine, but I find it a bit, you know, a bit clumbersome and I think the new way of doing this with articulation sets is way easier. So I'm probably going to be building articulation sets for every instrument I use because I think it's really cool. So the way we actually get this set up is we need to come into the inspector. If you've not got that open, you can press the I key on your keyboard or you can hit this little icon up here that opens the inspector. And you might have the region inspector, inspector open, but we just need the track inspector. And there's this option called Articulation Set. So we come in here, go ahead and hit New, and we're in the Articulation Set editor. And there's three panes to this. Switches lets you create your own inputs so that, say you were working with an instrument that didn't have key switches, or you want to build something else to do live triggering of the different articulations, you can set those up here. Then in Articulations, we'll define what they actually are. And then in Output, we'll tell Logic how to tell the virtual instrument how to actually get those sounds. Um, easier than it sounds, I'll work through it. So in the articulation pane here, we've got one set up. I'm going to go ahead and rename that to, I'll just copy what we've got there, so Svib, and we'll add another one. And I'm just working through the list. So we have sus uh, VM and another one. This one is called sus MV. And I'm going to work through all these. I will skip ahead until it's done because it's kind of tedious. Okay, so we've got them all created and they're sequentially numbered with an articulation ID, that's fine. We don't need to change the channel for them. One thing you might want to do is go ahead and give them the appropriate uh, symbol if you'd like. So, you know, that, that will affect your score editor, I presume. I've not checked it, but I'm guessing that it's for the score editor. Um, so, yeah, they've got all the standard sort of articulations that you might want to mark there, but certainly not one for, for everything. But, you know, worth having a look through if you do a lot of score work. Okay, so we've got these set up. Now what we need to do is tell Logic what happens when we choose these. Um, I think already now we'll see them available here. Yeah, so now back in the piano roll, we've got these options there. And we can select some notes and go ahead and assign them an articulation. The only thing is the virtual instrument, well, Logic doesn't know how to tell the virtual instrument what we do with those, so we have to define that first. So we'll just go back into, oops, here we are back into edit this. So we come to the output tab. Basically all we have to do is say how do we trigger these. Um, so in this case because the instrument is expecting a key switch we can trigger these articulations with a note on signal. And there's lots of other ones. Uh, seems to be a limitation that you can only have one uh, you know one signal sent with each articulation type. So if you had a virtual in instrument that required two things to be sent, maybe a note and you know a, a controller message uh, you can't do that at the moment. Uh, but this is a nice and straightforward one. I think most plugins are. We can just use a note on to send a key switch. So for susvib, we can see that we need to send a C0. So channel's fine, select is fine. We just need to change the... No, 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 I'm telling a lie. Here we go. It's our selector is the one that we need to change. Value would be the velocity of it, I suppose, but it's not important. So we will select C0 for this one. There we go. And for the next one, note on, they're just going to go up chromatically. So the next one will be a C sharp zero. And for the next one, we need a D zero. Ooh, can't find it. There we go. And again, I'll skip through this because it's pretty tedious. Uh, 
Okay, so that's all of them set. So I've just copied the appropriate key switch that we need to hit for each of these articulations. Um, that's all we need to do. I'm hoping this will just work now. So if I go ahead and open up the piano roll, uh, we can choose a note, and we can choose an articulation. So we'll have this one staccato, and there we go. That's now a staccato note. Uh, this one will have susbib, and we'll have a couple more. Vibrato, uh, I didn't mean that, I meant staccato. And, well, let's hear that. Yeah, nice. And I just think this is an easier way to work through it. It didn't take that long to set up, and now I can work through, you know, this little, this little passage here, and just sort of audition things as I go, uh, which is kind of nice, because previously, uh, <laughs> if you're using the key switches and drawing them in, it's kind of cumbersome to be coming down here and be like, oh yeah, this, then that, then that. Uh, I don't like that. I think this is so much easier. I can just select the notes, choose my articulation, and away we go. I think it's really nice. Um, so, how do we prevent having to do that every single time? What we need to do is we need to save this whole uh, patch now. So that would be the plugin instance and this articulation set. First thing we can do is save the articulation set. So we'll save as, and I'd recommend putting them in folders. So, because I intend on doing a lot of these, um, what should we call this? We'll just save it in there as uh, solo violin. Okay, so we can recall that articulation set now at any time. Uh, it's in east-west solo violin, it's there. Um, but you can also save so that you don't have to trigger that. So what we need to do is press Y to open up the library. And, oh, which is the button? It's that button. If you want to use the clicky thing, it's this one here. And here's all the default patches and your custom ones. And you just hit save. And we're now saving the patch for the currently selected track. So I'm going to save it in the subfolder, call it East West. I'm going to just call this solo violin. I can always reorganize these later if I want. Okay, so that's saved in there as a patch now. So what this means is when I create a new instrument, now what I can do, there's no instrument loaded, but I can go straight into my user patches, east-west, solo violin, and it will load up the appropriate instrument, and it's there, and it's also going to load up my articulation set with it. So you know, it doesn't take very long to set it up for an instrument, and then I think it's a huge time saver for when you're doing sequencing work with that instrument. Um, so that's it. Hope that's helpful. Um, if it is helpful, go ahead and leave a comment and say it helped you. It's really nice when I get those. It uh, makes me feel like this is worth doing. And yeah, best of luck with everything.